the wisdom principles for problem solving. Hallelujah. Let's say it together. Wisdom principles for problem solving. Problems are a part of life. Hallelujah. Problems are what? It's a part of life. If you are one that is always complaining and looking, you know, why something is not working and you are living a delusional life. <laughs> Amen. Problems are what? They are a part of life. Salvation does not exempt anybody from problems. It only equips you with a different set of skills or abilities to deal with problems. The Bible said something in the book of Job, chapter 14, and the verse 1. A very interesting scripture. Amen. Job 14 and the verse 1. So we are dealing with wisdom principles for problem solving. Job said, man that is born of a woman is of few days. But those few days, eh? Whether 30, 20, 50, 70, 75, 80, 90, 95, 300, over 300, it is full of trouble. Hallelujah. Problems are fundamental to every human existence. So because problems are a part of life, the ability to solve problem is actually a fundamental, sustainable human skill. It, you, it is like learning how to eat because you need food to survive. You understand it? Uh -huh. In the same way, you must learn how to solve problems because you will face them every day. Every single day. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So learning how to solve problems should not be an expertise for somebody. It should be an essential life skill. There are many kinds of problems. Eh? If you should ask anybody, if you go to the street and ask anybody, what are your problems? I'm sure that among the many problems that you will talk about, the, the highest will be financial problem. The rich has financial problem. The poor also has financial problem. Hallelujah. Yeah. There are emotional problems. There are relationship problems. Marriage problems. Health problems. Glory to God. There are, uh, what other kind of problems? You can mention some of them. Intellectual problems. Yeah, some people just can't get anything right. It's a problem. Mental problem. Amen. Spiritual problems. Plenty. Problems are a part of life. Learning how to solve problem should not be something you decide to do. It is something you must learn to do because that is what life is about. Are we together here? Learning how to solve a problem should never become an option for a believer. Else, you will never be able to realize the life that God has designed for you never possible. Hallelujah. Are we together here? So, solving problem is actually um, the ability to find a way out of difficulty. How to find a way out of difficulty. That is what we mean by solving problem. The ability to find ways out of this difficulty. How to find a way around an obstacle. How to attain an objective that is not readily available or immediately understandable. Something that is difficult to do. Something that is not available, but you want it. It poses a problem to you. Isn't it? Yes. So, you want to travel, but you are still on the streets of Accra. It's a problem. So, you have a travel problem. Amen. Anything you want that is not readily available to you 
poses a problem to you. You want a million Ghana cities. Let's not go to dollars. A million Ghana cities. And yet, anytime you look at your bank balance, you feel ashamed. You have a problem. You have a problem. You must acknowledge you have a problem. And you must look for ways to solve it. Glory to God. You want to be married. Yet all the ladies are bouncing you. You should know that you have a problem. One of the biggest problems is when you know you don't have a problem. Or when you don't know you have a problem. Are we together here? Yeah. Most especially when somebody else knows that you have a problem, but you don't know you have a problem. And they are trying to draw your mind to it. And you think they are the problem. How many of us have seen people like that? Like, you know these people have problems. But when you try to talk to them, they think you are actually a problem to them. You are, you are just frustrating their lives. Ah, hope I are too much. Amen. So anything that poses as a difficulty, as an inability, it does not matter whether it is destructive or not, it's a problem. Yeah. And if you don't learn how to tune your mind into that which easily solves problem, you will build difficulties around your life and live that reality as though it is normal. The one that remains poor has not seen poverty as a problem yet. You get the point here? Until you see hunger as a problem, you will never rise up to go and find something to eat. No wonder you can be hungry, but it doesn't bother you. How many of us sometimes go? To, you are hungry, but it doesn't bother you. You will still go on to do what you are doing. Until the thing gets to a certain threshold, now it begins to bother you. That is when you now want to go and buy something to eat. So, until you define a problem, the drive to solve it will never come. Until you define a what? Until you define a problem. And in defining problem, there are two ways. There is what we call ill-defined problems and well-defined problems. So problem can be ill-defined or well-defined. Defining a problem is crucial in developing the ability, the skill, the wisdom to solve problems. Everybody must learn how to define problems. And in defining problem, you will either ill-define the problem or you will well-define the problem. What is an uh, ill defined problem. An ill-defined problem is a problem where the specific nature of the problem is not clear. The specific nature of the problem is not clear. It's ill-defined. It doesn't mean that uh, you can't solve it. It only means that it will, it will take a lot to solve it. Are we together here? Yeah. An ill-defined problem that it has an unclear nature. And not only that, the information required to solve the problem itself is also not obvious. So it's like you are lost. You know you have a problem, but you don't have what it takes to immediately determine the solution. One of them is when you ask a lady, uh, why are you quiet? And she doesn't know. But she knows that she's not happy. But she doesn't know. Is that not it? The men. That is an ill-defined problem. <laughs> so, so, you wanting to make her happy, you don't know what to also do. Hallelujah. The nature of the problem is not clear. You don't know whether it is an emotional problem or <laughs> money answered all things. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then there is a well-defined problem. So, well-defined problem is the opposite. Well-defined problem 
has the nature of the problem and the information needed to solve it available. Obvious. All right? So, both, in both ways, we are looking at the nature of the problem and then available information. In this case, over here, in this case, this one is unclear. And then in a well-defined problem. So every problem has its nature. You have to be able to define the problem. What's, what is the nature of this problem? Is this problem financial? Is this problem emotional? Is this problem uh, psychological? Is this problem spiritual? Hallelujah. Some people have problems, but they don't even know whether it is spiritual or it's psychological. So some people will be praying about financial problems when they don't need to pray. Are we together here? Yeah? Some people will be praying about psychological problem, when they should seek counsel. You understand the thing? So when you know the nature of a problem, it helps you to define steps to solve the problem. It's everywhere. These are generic things, both in life, in, in industry, if you are working, and there's a problem. Anytime there's a problem in the workplace, the first thing to do is to sit down, look at the problem, and define it. And do what? Define it. So, the nature of the problem, of what nature is my problem? As I'm talking, be, be going through your own life and be picking examples from your own selves. This one is a bit personal. If I use somebody as an example, maybe the person will be offended. Hallelujah. Yeah. All right. Now, in, in looking at problems, def, trying to define problems, you must have a certain mental disposition before you go into types of problems, okay, or kinds of problems. There should be a certain mental... Your mind is your first and prime resource or tool to solving problems irrespective of what kind of problem it is. Hallelujah. Your mind is what you need to solve every problem. Mental problem, financial problem, relationship problem, emotional problem. Every kind of problem requires your mind. And not just your mind, but what your mind does. It is called mentality, mindset. Mindsets. Mindsets. Problem solving begins with mindsets. Mind what? There are some people, as soon as they see a problem, they, def they, they define themselves, they make a judgment that they have been defeated. Charlie, this time that we will die. Mindsets. There are some people, too, the moment they see a problem, they, they begin to encourage themselves. It is all the minds. When the mindset is wrong, you, you lose from the very beginning. Hallelujah. Don't forget, we are always solving problems. Every day we are. This morning, everybody had to solve one fundamental problem to reach here. That is mobility, eh? movement. Nobody translated. Everybody had to go through certain well-defined processes to solve the problem of movement. Is that not so? Somebody had to go and stand by the wayside, hoping that the car will come. Some of you are late because the truck driver didn't come on time. Is that not so? It, it, you didn't do it. You solved one fundament. Every day we are solving problems. Glory to God. As early as this morning is, I'm sure one fundamental problem hasn't kicked in. By 1 8 p.m. or 2, the problem of hunger will also start coming. And if you are married, you will probably have a solution waiting. If you are not, you will now be thinking, how do I solve this problem? Hallelujah. We are always solving problems. No matter how trivial it is, we are always solving problems. Amen. And mindset is necessary. Two key mindsets that you must always have in an attempt to solve problems. 
is that number one, every problem is a wisdom problem. Every problem is as a result of insufficient or absence of wisdom. Either by lack or absence of wisdom. Glory to God. Whatever a person cannot do, it is because he is not wise in the field or in that aspect. Whatever a person cannot become, it is because he does not know how to become it. There's somebody here. Yeah. Very important. So anytime you identify a problem, know that you first of all have to solve the demand or meet the demand for wisdom. Meet the demand for wisdom. Because when you know what to do, you will solve the problem. Are we together here? Hallelujah. Number two, every problem is solvable. This thing should be settled in your mind. Every problem is solvable. Every problem is what? It's solvable. Come with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. Every problem is solvable. He says that there has not, there has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. There is no problem you have that is strange. Can we have it in a different translation? See, we all experience times of testing. The HCSB says what? No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to humanity. Your problem is not too special. You know, stop courting sympathy because you think you have a problem. It's okay. It's normal. It's a mindset. If you wake up one day and your landlord says, okay, I have increased your rent from 1,000 to 3,000. It's not strange. It's not what? Because the average Ghanaian goes to shop today, the thing is 70 Ghana. Next week, it's 120. It's, it's okay. Stop crying. The, the, the moment the thing shocks you, you have lost your foothold. That is a fundamental skill that separates people who solve problems and people who are overtaken by problems. The initial shock have the mindset is solvable. Ah, this one is what? Solvable. Break up. I'll get another girl. It's normal. <laughs> Hallelujah. Have that mentality. Every problem is solvable. Every problem is what? So, I was, I was, hey, so what am I going to do? See, what will people say? Stop saying that one. There is always something you know to do. Says, no temptation has taken you, but such as is according to man's nature. And God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above what you are able to bear. So if God allows it, we will say, oh, so God, where are you? God, do you see what I'm going to? God is seeing it. He knows this one is okay for you. That's why he has not, he has not intervened. That's why he has not stepped into the matter. This is Bible. Hallelujah. Have this mentality. Every problem is solvable. Say with me, every problem is solvable. When it appears that you cannot solve it, the first mindset should kick in. There is a lack of wisdom. So God, show me, what do I do? Every problem is what? It's solvable. Very important. Have this mindset. Embrace it. If you don't get anything today, take these two things. Any problem you have is solvable. So now you can start mentioning them. Start listing them. Aha, this thing that all this year I've been swerving this problem, not knowing it's solvable. It's solvable. It is, so, it is scaring you because you don't know what to do. You've not met the demand of wisdom in solving that problem. Every problem is solvable. 
Hallelujah. Every problem is what? It's solvable. Glory to God. Yeah. If you have financial problem, it's solvable. If you have relationship problem, it's what? It's solvable. If you have spiritual problem, it's what? It's solvable. Spiritual marriage. <laughs> One guy I was talking to, I was talking to one guy, and <laughs> it's funny. I mean, he didn't mean it, but it was a joke. Hallelujah. So we're talking about spiritual marriage. How that sometimes when you sleep in a the dream, then you'll be having sex and all of that. So, oh, so the, this one, don't deliver me. I like it like that. <laughs> Leave my spiritual marriage alone. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, but it's, it's just a joke. Amen. <laughs> so let's look at there are there are there are there are three forms or kinds of problems. Whatever the problem is, every problem takes one of these three kinds. Amen. Three kinds of problems. Whatever your problem is, no matter how, any problem you identify, there are three kinds. And every kind, is it, these three kinds of problems actually require specific uh, psychological or mental skills. You know, I said, your mind is your greatest tool in solving problems. If your mind is not working, you can't solve problems. It's simple as that one. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Was it here I said something? I, I got angry some time ago. And I said, you know, when I hear something, people write on Facebook, what is the... What is the use of pi house squared? Uh, <laughs> how does it impact our lives? You know, have you been seeing those things? And I said, you see, when we despise simple things like arithmetic, 2 plus 2 is 4, square root of 16 is 4, and we, we despise them. It is the reason why normal people selling on the roadside have to take five extra minutes to calculate how much you bought and sometimes get it wrong and lose money in the process. It's a very simple thing. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's why people simple arithmetic gets to them. That is a huge thing. See, if, if, if you find these things as problems, I'm telling you, you will not succeed. You don't need any case. You don't need any, you won't succeed. It's simple. The, the devil can keep, pay attention to other people. You, you have enough to fall you, to destroy you. Hallelujah. Very important. Building the mind is key to solving every problem of life. Building the what? The mind. Building the mind. Hallelujah. No matter your problem, it is all in their mind. If you don't build your mind, some people don't learn. It's interesting. See, sometimes you try to help people. You know that this guy, eh, the solution you are giving to him or her, if their mind is not even able to hold the solution. So that problem, it can never be solved. Hallelujah. And listen, if your mind, imagine one day I, I looked at uh, certain forms. You know, in Ghana here, it's, 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 it's sad that even educated people even university graduates pay SHS graduates who are acting as agents to file visa forms for them. And I don't get it. It's just a form. Name, you know it. Age, you know it. Date of birth, you know it. Yet, it's an SHS graduate who poses as an agent who will take money from you to do what your mind can easily handle. It's not rocket science. It's, it's, not, it's not nuclear physics. Glory to God. And I, I'm, I'm wondering. Praise God. And then these people, can, these people can massacre your life. You don't know. They can manufacture information in the form. You will never know until five years time you are feeling a different form somewhere. And that thing will pop up. Today you say your father is Mr. Kenneth Obin. But the other time, you said your father is <laughs> Mr. Benjamin Asari. Hey, <laughs> you are a bastard. We can't accept you. And you would think it's the devil. It's not the devil. You, you, you stopped to use your mind. 
Commit to building your mind. It does not matter whether you've gone to school or not. Building the mind is not a school matter. It's a personal responsibility. Is that what? Build your mind. It is a personal response. Leave, leave teachers out. Build your mind. Take time. Read books. So if you cannot read, listen. It will enter your ears. Listen to issues. Listen to people discuss issues. Not the one on radio uh, antenna. No. <laughs> we are talking about proper discussion so that something will enter this brain. Your mind should be able to know how to solve problems. Hallelujah. An empty mind cannot solve the least of problems. That's why people, their problem is very simple. Yet they can't solve it. Glory to God. Somebody has not been able to solve lateness problem for five years just because they relocated to a certain place. And ever since, because they stayed there, every day they are late. Five years, it is only one problem. They've not been able to solve it. It is an indication that your mind is weak or you have not committed yourself to solving that problem. You can't have a recurrent problem all your life. Praise God. Hallelujah. You can't be unemployed for three years. One year may be excusable. Two, three, no. Leave government out. You cannot. What happened to selling tomatoes? Glory to God. What happened to collecting rubbish for money? You don't know how to solve problem. Oh, you think collecting rubbish for money is below you? The richest man in Ghana, one of the richest man in Ghana is collecting rubbish. Amen and amen. He's collecting rubbish. When you set your mind to work, and it's the, the, the normal one skill in solving problems. So, these three, they demand certain skills. The number one skill in solving problems is mental skill. Or mental ability. Mental ability. If you lose that one, every other thing won't work. Mental ability. Amen and amen. Yeah. It's a skill in solving problem. Before I go to the next skill. So what is the first kind of problem? The first kind, and a very simple one, is arrangement problems. What is arrangement problem? Arrangement problem simply has to do with problem that has to do with sequence and form and structure. Proper sequencing of events or activities or issues. Hallelujah. Yeah. So some of you, your problem is just arrangement problem. How to sequence certain things after a certain criteria. All right. So for example, a young man is married and he's having problem taking care of his home. If you look at the problem, maybe you ask a few questions, then you know that his problem is an arrangement problem. Maybe he, he got a job which was contract, three months contract. Or six months. And he got deluded in the fact that because he is working six month contract, oh, when they finish, they will give us another six months. Then he quickly went to marry. After six months, they said, go home. He didn't know how to arrange the events of his life. So he, he not being able to take care of his home has nothing to do with any spirit. He has, a, he has a simple arrangement problem. What to do first before another and then to do afterwards. What to put at the very last? He doesn't know. The, and there are many people like that. You know, they do things as and when it comes. Glory to God. They do things as and when it 
It can't. They don't know what to put on hold. They don't know what, what to let go. They don't know when to move from one place. It's arrangement problem. You pick a criteria and then you arrange things based on that criteria. So there are arrangement problems. Hallelujah. Are we together? Can somebody give me an example of an arrangement problem? The way I've explained it. Eh? Stop looking at, looking at my face. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Arrangement problem. Hmm? You're not thinking. Hallelujah. But it's, 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 I hope you understand what I'm saying. Some problems have to do with what to do first. It's just, it's, for me, I believe it's the simplest of all problems you deal with. If you miss that proper arrangement, then you will have issue. If you miss it, you will have what? You will have issue. Glory to God. Yeah. A simple arrangement problem like introducing a guy to your parent first before you start doing wife duties. It's simple. You get it? Uh -huh. But if you, if you miss that arrangement, then the relationship will go south. You will think that all men, are, all men are not the same. You didn't know how to arrange the faces of the relationship. Hallelujah. You didn't know what to do first before another thing. Glory to God. Then there's another kind of problem which is induction problems. Induction. The problems of induction. Uh, if, if you went to a very good school, you will know Mathematical induction. Amen. How many of us know mathematical induction? Hey. Okay, let's hear from Omadi what mathematical induction is about. <laughs> All right. So with 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 the with an induction problem, most of the time, many things are happening. Mostly, it is almost like an ill-mannered problem, which does not have clear um, nature or information. So you, you have a lot of things happening. What you are doing is that you are trying to connect what is happening to other things that you think are the problems. You are, connect, you are looking for relationships. All right? So a, a couple of things. Maybe you are unemployed. Why, why am I unemployed? In induction. You are looking at why... Is it that you are unemployed, even though you are going for uh, interviews, right? Or is it that the interviews are, are not doing well in the interview? You don't know. You get it. Is it that maybe where I am staying, I'm not exposed to better opportunities? Many people travel from many places to come to Accra with the hope that they will get a job easily. And then they, they continue their unemployment for two more years or three or four until they get tired. They say, which I, I'm going back to where I came from. So sometimes you don't know. But it's a problem. So how do you reason your way out of such a problem? You must think inductively. You must, you must learn to create relationships between various things and assess them one after the other. It's a difficult process, but you must solve it. I know a lot of Christians would rather want to pray in the name of Jesus, supernatural job. <laughs> you see, it's good. God blesses. God opens doors. But you see, you will, you will have a faster rate of solving problem with your mind than just relying on a prophetic word. I'm telling you, I give prophetic words, isn't it? Last Sunday, we had a testimony of search. But that word came to many people. Are you getting the point here? I'm not saying the prophetic word is not effective. But then, you see, you can't bank all of your life on the word spoken. The word may probably not be for you, even though you heard it. You understand it? And sometimes the prophetic word does not come with enough or detailed instructions for you to know exactly what to do. It should be your mental disposition to solve your problem first. Then God now will back you up. If you have not exhausted 
your human ability, God will not waste his divine ability on you. Take this from me. If you have not exhausted your human ability or used your human ability, God will not waste his divine ability on you. It is God who gives wisdom to pass exams. But I have never seen God wake anybody up and then translate the person to the exams room. I've never seen God in an exams hall distributing calculators to people because they forgot to bring it. It is his place to remind you. It is your place to take the necessary tools to the exams room. You fail your own, God will not waste his own. It is one principle you must get. Hallelujah. Are we together here? So, induction problem has to do with when you are dealing with many issues and you don't know where to start from. What you do is you start to build relationship between things. Okay. This is where I stay. This is where I went to seek for a job. This is where, uh, 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 this is my, what do you call it? My academic qualification. This is what the job wants. This is my number of years of experience. Hallelujah. You are now looking at how to match all these things. Is it that, okay, my experience is lesser than what the job wants or the course I did. There was one lady who had, who had applied for school about three or so four times and she was not getting it. I was worried. So one day I said, okay, send me your, your uh, uh, that, that, that's in the WASI certificate. Send it to me. Let me look at it. Amazingly, she didn't do elective maths. She did language. She said, Ga or something. I said, ah, how can you run away from elective math because when you were in school, you didn't want hard work. And you were uh, applying for <laughs> procurement and purchasing and supply or say procurement and logic something. You won't get it. So this one, we have to look for a new course. So I looked through all the courses in the school and I advised based on what she has, setting whether she likes it or not. If you, it's the school you want to go, <laughs> amen. If you, if you are insistent on the course, then go, go and do that thing they do, uh, the remedial, and write the maths. It's okay, Papa, I want to go to the school. It's okay. Then choose these other courses. Just one attempt, and then she got to school. Now she's in school. It's that simple. Induction. Look at the things around you. Study it. Look at how. If you did, if you did general arts, it can only produce certain things in your next, you know, level of education. If you did general science, there are certain courses that are available to you. You can't leave that domain and be fighting for something else. God, God will help you. Are we together here? Hallelujah. Is that somebody who did visual arts? Is it because I have a prophetic word? I am applying for human biology. Look, look. That's, that's interesting. So you apply, you don't get. You apply, you don't get. Four years, five years. Every day you are applying. One day we call you. So your problem is you are not getting admission. But what really is the problem? It's an induction problem. Let's look at the factors. And let's look at the possibilities. Let's try to create a relationship. Then we will realize that, ah, the things you have cannot create the things you are looking for. Hallelujah. And very closely is another type of problem, which is transformation problems. So mostly, transformation problem is almost like induction problem. But the only difference is that in transformation problems, you, you, you have come to the end of the issue and you identify that the outcome is not what you wanted. You understand it? The outcome is not what you want. You want it. So, in transformation problem, what you are, the reason why we call it transformation is that you are trying to transform that unwanted outcome to a new outcome. Are we together? So, in a transformation problem, there is an existing outcome you don't like. Let's say your financial situation. You don't like it. Hallelujah. You don't know what? 
You don't like your financial. It's like every time something big happens to you, you have to look for who to borrow money from. If your life is like that, you don't have to like it. Amen. Every day you are living in fear. You are afraid something will happen. There are some of you, every year you have to borrow for rent. Every year. And rent is not an emergency. How many of us realize that rent is not an emergency? Amen. Or you, you thought it was. Rent is never an emergency. You always know it will come. Glory to God. In fact, it is, it is very useless to borrow for rent. Never do that. If you're a member of this, don't do that. If you were doing it, stop. It only reveals somebody who doesn't plan. Because you can't plan for 12, uh, 12 months and fail. Plan only one thing. Rent. Amen. Can you imagine? Also, you know that next year, by a certain period of time, you will pay a certain amount of money. And then, you know, even if you forget, you don't have right to forget. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, if you have, let's say, your financial situation is not good. Like right now that we are here, there are some of you, if a problem pops up and we need 2,000 Ghana, you have to start going through your call list. Then you start WhatsApping people. So it's been a long time. Oh. It's a lie. We all know that you are going to. So you know that your financial situation. But then you have a desired financial situation. Maybe by this time, you should have had some three accounts with the list of them getting some maybe 20,000 B in it. You understand? And then some one that you used to just walk around. You see Shama, you buy some. Hallelujah. But you are, you are not there yet. So you have a transformation problem. You want to transform your present situation to a better outcome. What do you do? This is where you do analysis. So normally in business, we have what, something we call gap analysis, all right? Where there is a standard for something. And then there is your real reality or your real outcome or your present outcome. So what we do in gap analysis is that we are trying to analyze the distance, the differences between your present state and then your desired state. So between your present financial state, we can start differences between, uh, let me use an example, differences between uh, David, uh, Elder David, as at, today's day is what, 10th? 10th. So Elder David, as at 10th November 2024, and then Elder David, <laughs> As expected, <laughs> 10th November 2025. What's the difference? Okay. Today's Elder David does not have problem with meals. He can buy anything he wants to eat. But then if he has problem more than 5,000, he has to plan for at least three months. Okay. That's the difference. The Elder David I want to be I should be able to solve every problem instantly up to the tune of 50,000. Like, right now, right now, if I'm driving hard and my engine breaks down. Oh, how much is a new engine? Oh, it's 40,000. Okay, bring it right now, right now. Hey! Hey! Isn't that a nice life? I thought you would claim it. <laughs> no, but that's how you, you assess your life. That right now, what is the biggest blow I can take? And nobody will know anything has happened to me. Then you know your level. Then what is the difference? So what can I do to change my present state to the one I desire? So when you are doing this analysis, you are looking for differences between what you are and what you want to be. And as you study those differences, you are you are looking at what to do for those differences to minimize until it is zero. That means that now you have achieved your desired result. Hallelujah. So, transformation problems normally come with new things you must do 
so that you can get a better outcome. With induction problems, it is the very things that you are doing, you are just looking at which one to do better. Like the example I gave you with the admission. You can't change your results. You still have to find a way to use that result to still get school. You understand it? But with transformation problems, you will have to find something new. You have to change something so that you can get a better result. Hallelujah. With transformation problems, for example, eh? for example, let's say you, you stay in Zen or Chiblo. Hallelujah. I said, lady, and any time you go out, all the guys who, who are calling you are trekking with sweats and they don't even have handkerchief. Hey, sis. <laughs> Charlie, where with a pal? I have, this is a transformation problem. Yeah. Bad people can't be liking me like that. So I have to change. So one of the ways you can change is to change where you stay. Hallelujah. And come and stay at a... Sakumono. Dev Traco. Dev Traco Plus. Where? Chasaco Springs, yeah. Close to where I stay. <laughs> At least, one of the things that will change is that people who will stop you are those in car. They will park. Hello, are you going my way? Say, I'm going your way. <laughs> so, in transformation problem, you will have to do something new. You have to discover what you are supposed to do. So some people have, because they are not able to discover the nature of their problem, they don't know what new thing. They are doing the same old things and complaining why things are not changing. Because they have not sat down to know that what they are dealing with is a transformation problem. Are we together here? Some people think that their problem is arrangement. So they do uh, CCC. Okay, let me do this one first before I go here. First, a typical problem of arrangement can be in a day. How do you manage your day? Oh, okay. Let me go to the market first. Then after market, then I'll go and do my hair. Then after the hair, then I'll go and cook. Then before you realize, you go to market, Makola, traffic. You are leaving Makola by the time you get close to your home. It's 4 p.m. So you are left with a choice. Go and do your hair. Or go and cook. You have to choose one. It's okay. Let me go and cook. Then you will not do your hair. Then the following morning, that the wedding has come. You want to go and do your hair fast, 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 fast. And everybody is late. Your husband is angry. <laughs> it's, a, it's an arrangement problem. You see that? You know where I'm getting to, right? Yeah. Yeah. Arrangement problem. You don't know what to do first before the next one. Amen. <laughs> Hello, oh, no. arrangement problem. So some people end up doing things at the time they are not supposed to be doing because they didn't know how to arrange things. Hallelujah. Is somebody blessed there? Yeah. Let's look at how to, how to solve problems. Okay? Let's look at that one. Uh, let's see. The skills. Okay, so how to solve problems, we'll, we'll put it there. Okay. All right. Now, I'm, I want to look at how I can do this in 15 minutes. So, in solving problem, mental ability is your number one skill. And there are two kinds of mental ability. The first one is analytical thinking. The second one is synthetic thinking. To, to use your mind to solve problem, you must train your mind to think analytically. And you must also train your mind to think synthetically. There are two different kinds of thinking. Hallelujah. Look, one of your hobbies as a human being who understands that problems are a part of life 
and as such, must learn problem-solving skills as a survival mechanism. You must have a hobby of thinking. Learn to turn your boredom into thinking exercise. Hallelujah. If you know how to worry, you are a perfect candidate for thinking. The difference between thinking and worrying is that thinking is intentional. Worrying is reactional. When you worry, you are reacting to issues coming to you, coming to your mind, coming into your heart. You are reacting to them. You are, you are submitting yourself under the burden and the weight of the issues. But when you think you are, you are, uh, what's the name? You are attacking the issue in an objective way. Why am I single at 35? You are thinking. You are not worried. Hey, is you. Oh, hmm. You are worrying. You are worried. But when you start to think, you will start asking questions. And in thinking, you must learn to think analytically analytic thinking hallelujah analyzing analytic thinking helps you first of all to define problems it helps you define problems amen so that's with the word yes analytic thinking is good it's used for problem analysis how to analyze problems how to analyze, I won't, I won't get a space for that one. How to analyze problem. You analyze problems analytically. Some people analyze problem emotionally. You get it wrong right, right from start. Look at the way I'm talking. Look at the way you are looking at me. Eh? You, you, so you don't even respect me. The problem is not lack of respect. Maybe the problem is the grammar. The person is looking at you because the person is not trying to figure out the grammar you are using. You are using, speaking bad English. And he's not sure of what you are trying to see. But you have skipped the real problem and you are now attacking that person for not respecting you. So by the time you want to solve problem, you'll be solving a wrong problem. Hallelujah. Analytical thinking has to do with appropriate questioning. Appropriate questioning and proper identification of facts and details. Appropriate question. Asking the right questions. And identifying facts. Identifying what? Facts and details. Look at something in the book of Proverbs, chapter 18. Read the verse 13, verse 15, and verse 17. Analytical thinking. I'll come to synthetic thinking. Analytical thinking. Let's, let's read it in a different sense. The King James says, He that answered a matter before he heard it, it is folly and shame unto him. Let's get a different version. NIV. Uh -huh. He who answers before listening, that is his folly and his shame. Give me another one. Let's keep, give me a different one. Ah, that's what I wanted. It says to speak before you've heard the facts will bring you humiliation. Analytical thinking has to do with asking the right questions in order to get the facts and the details of the issue. Sometimes, even you yourself, it, is, it works both ways, whether you are solving a problem for somebody or you are solving your own problem. Ask your own self the right questions. Hallelujah. Why am I still single at 35 as a man? What are people looking for in a potential husband? List them. Do I have any of them? You have two out of six. So you are, you are arriving somewhere. You understand it? You are asking the right, you are picking the details. You are, you are not, you, you are skipping the emotions. All right. Emotions are very good. It's also part of the skills in solving problems, emotions. 
emotional. I think we've done emotions here, right? Let me just write so that I don't forget it. Emotional intelligence. Certain problems cannot be solved by being angry. Amen. Now some people, their first reaction to certain problems is anger. Listen, I'm angry. Don't look at my face. <laughs> you must be emotionally intelligent. Amen. Yeah. Some people's, some people's reaction, and it's a wrong reaction to problem. Some people's reaction to problem is anger. Some of them, their reaction to problem is isolation. Separation. When you do that, you are not emotionally intelligent. Hallelujah. Some people do, uh, me, my arm, my brother, me, you. Me, you. And you know, for example, somebody who maybe has tried school and they keep failing, they keep failing, they keep failing, then they lose their emotional hold. So now, not only will they separate from friends who have gone to school, but then they also dodge every conversation about school. Before long, initially to be like, oh, now I have peace. All these people, when they come from school, they will be worrying me with uh, school stories. And me, I don't go. It's just a matter of time. After you separated from them, just to save yourself, you will one day, five years, seven years down the line, eight years down the line, you will not have any friend in a powerful place to help you. Because you one day choose to isolate yourself from them as part of your problem solving. So emotional intelligence is extremely important. I have a friend, one day I told him that, look, this issue you are talking about, drop this your high horse, drop from your high horse, this your man of God, prophet, and humble yourself, all right? And then befriend this person. Amen. I told him, befriend this person, and you, you will be helped. Instead of the way you are handling things, stop uh, that age matter. You know me, I'm, I'm old. He has to respect me. You are, if you are old, stand for position. Lesson time. Oh, go to your hometown. Be a family head. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, we are working. We are making money. You say you are old. And you are poor. That's bad combination. You can't be old and poor at the same time. Hallelujah. Emotional intelligence. Very important. But let me, I'm just more... I'm more uh, uh, um, concerned with the mental ability. So, analytical thinking in analyzing problem. Number one, <clears throat> ask yourself what the problem is. Ask yourself why the problem exists. Why? Why? Why this problem? Why? Thinking is so difficult, some people will do everything possible to escape thinking. Because sometimes in thinking, you will have to come to the hard facts that you are not as good as you thought. Sometimes in thinking, you will have to come to the hard conclusion that you are as guilty as you thought everybody was. Probably more guilty. So, some people not wanting to come to those hard realizations will want to do everything possible not to think. And if you refuse to think, you can't solve a problem. Hallelujah. If you refuse to what? Think. The prodigal son solved his problem just by thinking. One day he, he analytically, he asked himself, ah, me, begging for pig's food. Pig. Eh? Pig is what? Uh, uh, Brad Charles, yeah. <laughs> hey, and said, ah, my father's house. If I am there, okay, even if my father is angry, 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 crap, okay, I can even become one of his servants. The servants, they eat better. He was just thinking. Nobody was advising him. He was thinking. He kept thinking and thinking and boom, he got and said, I'm going back. If my father does not accept me, I have an alternative. I will, I will propose to him that I want to save him. At least I will still enjoy, like maybe because I'm, I'm maybe I'm an, uh, a former son, I will probably be the chief servant. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thinking, why does this problem exist? Glory to God. Look for the causes of the problems, not just blaming cause.
cause is different from a person. When you blame, you look for a person. When you look, when you want to solve a problem, you don't look for a person, you look for a cause. Of course, the, the cause will come from a person. But you are, you are looking for the action, not just the person. Hallelujah. Sometimes you want to look at how much or to what extent is the problem occurring. There are certain problems they occur every time within a certain framework. Every time. Within a certain framework. Assess them. Do what? Assess them. Ask yourself, what is my current situation? What is my desired outcome? You should be able to know your current situation now. Hallelujah. You should be able to assess your financial situation right now and define yourself that, oh, Jack, I'm not in a good place. You should be able to look at your emotional situation and know that you are not in a good place. You need, you need to heal. You should be, you don't live in denial. If you want to, so, that is analytical thinking. You should be able to say that I, I don't like the way my marriage is like. I don't like my workplace. I don't like this friendship. It's not helping me. You should be able to know it. Don't live in denial. I don't think, oh, you know, uh, no, I just don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. No. <laughs> what is your current situation? You know, knowing your current situation does not mean that, oh, uh, hmm, it's not easy. We are, we are pushing, but it's not pushing. No. Knowing your current situation will help you to know how far you are from your desired outcome. So that you will know how much work you must put into becoming what you want to become. Hallelujah. How far? Glory to God. How far? Amen. One of my desired outcomes this year, I wanted to have a certain amount of money being in my account. Then when I hit that money, I was happy. Then I reminded myself that to, to have gotten here, I have stopped so many things. So practically, that money is fake. Because if I resume doing the things I'm supposed to be doing, that money will vanish. So I've decided I will start from next year. <laughs> but <laughs> it's very important. Just assess yourself. Don't lie to yourself. We are solving problems every day. Hallelujah. So don't behave like you are the one with all the problems. No, no, no. Somebody is not talking, but their own probably is more than your own. Hallelujah. We have a lot of problems. Also, plenty. Also, you don't have problems. Yeah. But I can define my current situation right now. Right now. There are things I can do. There are things I can't do. Amen. Yesterday, I was talking to Pastor Ben that we needed somebody that we will pay. I gave him budget that I can pay up to this point. Beyond it, I can't pay. It is not fit. I know that this one, even if God doesn't intervene, I can do this one. If you go beyond it, I can't do a simple. Amen. I'm not assistant God. With God, all things are possible. So analyze it. That is thinking. You are thinking. You are what? You are thinking. Glory to God. Then there is the systematic thinking. What is, I said systematic, sorry, synthetic thing. No, the word synthetic, okay, is from the word synthesize. Synthesize. Eh? If you went to a good school, you understand this one. Hallelujah. But don't worry, even if you didn't go to a good school, you are in a good church. So I, I, will understand, I will explain it to you. Amen. So the word synthesize. <laughs> To, to synthesize basically means to, to produce something, all right, by adding various components together. Reproduction, synthesis, photosynthesis. Eh? What is photosynthesis? There was a, there was a popular definition for it. Eh, what is, who, can, who can remember that one? I'll give the person 50 gallon. Hey, gamma. <laughs> 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 Hallelujah. Huh? 
Sunday school people, I don't think they have gotten there. Photosynthesis. Do you know photosynthesis? Uh, okay, define it. Uh, for what? No, 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 50 galas, it has expired. <laughs> Ooh. Herbert, uh, it's what? Photosynthesis. Wow. It's the process whereby. But he didn't add, add some components. I'll give you 20 Ghana. Yeah, but there are other things, isn't it? Chlorophyll. <laughs> okay, so I'll give you 50 Ghana. Clap for him. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, uh, the process whereby plants prepare their own, so they, they form, it's a formation. So, this kind of thinking you are trying to create. So, it's, it's another way we can call it creative thinking. You are trying to create something that does not exist. It is not readily available in your mind. It's not there. But you are trying to look for it. You are trying to create it. If you fail with analytical, because analytical thinking gives you the facts, the things to use, the things to put together. So, if you fail with analytical thinking, you cannot do well with synthetic or uh, creative thinking. You can't. Because then there is nothing. And that's why a lot of people are not able to solve their problems. Because they don't have the facts. They don't have the word. The facts. And that's what consultants do. Uh, 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 those people who talk to people and get the money, wasn't it? Therapist. Therapist. When you come, first one or two sessions is questions and answers. What are they doing? They are gathering facts. Then when they gather all the facts, they will now process it and give alternatives and try to discuss with you which one you resonate with best. Then they will now devise a, an execution plan based on what strategy they realize that you are connecting with. So it is always analytical first. People are not able to solve problems because they don't know how to answer the right questions or ask the right questions. They don't know how to detect or identify facts. Facts. Facts are powerful. Facts are what? Facts are powerful. Glory to God. In our world where people don't like to be judged, they always want to twist facts. But the fact is that when you do an exam and you score 52, it cannot be A. It can't be A. You are not an A student. Amen. Don't say, oh, me, I know, but I, because I couldn't write. Nobody knows what you have inside your head. What we are judging is what is on the paper. It is 59%. No, you can never solve a problem if you want to deny the facts. The fact is that you had E4. Or do you have E4? E7. Or E8. Uh -huh. You have E8. Aggregate 28. That's the fact. It does not matter. Don't stop praying about God. I want to do mechanical. Stop that prayer. Glory to God. When we are prophesying, a year by this time you will be in school. You will do the cause that is on your hearts. Say, God help me. Don't say amen. Say, God help me. You have E8. It's a fact. It helps you to think how to solve. Okay, so this E8. I still want to be a mechanical engineer. Maybe I can start with... Uh, yeah, vocational school. I can go and do technician, uh, whatever, whatever. Isn't it? Mechanical technician. Then when I do... They, they have is it NVTI. Then when I do that one, I can go and do another course. Then one day, one day, maybe four years down the line, then boom, I will enter tech. Then I'll go and do three years. Then I'm now a mechanical engineer. When, when you get the fact right, you will be able to creatively think of a way. That's how we solve problems. Hallelujah. The problem is that a lot of us have been fed with so much hope. So much... Uh, 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 unfounded faith. Because the Bible calls something unfeigned faith. So there is, a, there is like another kind of faith which is actually wrong. People believe in what does not work. So instead of they creatively looking for solution for their problem, they are always praying. 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 Two years. Praying. Three years. Praying. One day they wake up and they have given up. Then they now become philosophers. 
No. All these prayers, they are not necessary. Do you know the prayers we have prayed? We have prayed more than. It's a lie. You believe wrongly. Hallelujah. One of the books that blessed me very well when we were growing up by Joseph Prince. I don't know if he's still there. Yeah, the power of right believing. How many of us have seen that book before? Hey, you've not seen? That's dangerous. Amen. The power of what? Right believing. You can believe wrongly. Amen. All right. Synthetic. So, in synthetic thinking, let me end quickly. You, you are now using the facts and the details to arrive at a solution. So I'm going to give you a six-step process to creatively thinking your way out of problem. All right? I call it a systematic method. Using a systematic method to think your way out of every, every problem imaginable. Already you have settled on in your mind that every problem is solvable. Every problem is what? Solvable. And if there is a problem that you cannot solve, you know that it is as a result of lack or absence of what? Of wisdom. So you go for wisdom. Search for wisdom. In the Bible. Eh? Hallelujah. Yeah. Search for wisdom. The word of God is... Is a primary source of divine wisdom. Sometimes searching for wisdom would mean that you have to uh, consult with certain technical uh, books on the subject. Amen. You can't be having marriage problems and all your life you have not read any marriage book. That is dangerous. You don't have a problem. You don't want to solve anything. It's, it's serious. You've heard me say it over here many, many times. That sometimes, I, people come to me. The problems I think people have, when we do meetings for that specific they are the same people who don't come. And it only tells me that I'm wasting my time on such people. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, every problem is solvable. When it is difficult to solve it, it's a wisdom issue. Go for wisdom. Go for what? Go for wisdom. Very important. Hallelujah. We want to start a studio. I, I told they can you. I went out. We went to a bookshop. And I bought books on media. For me. Not for him. For me. <laughs> Amen. Because I can't put my money into something I have no idea about. I started to learn. Amen. Very soon I will be a media producer, director. I said, oh, somebody says, what school did you go? No. I have solved the wisdom gap. Hallelujah. Are we together here? Very key. So every problem is solvable. When you can't solve it, it's a wisdom issue. Meet the wisdom demand. You'll be able to solve the problem. So number one, step one. Identify the problem. We've thought about it. Identify the problem. Step two. Commit your problem to the Lord. You can't skip this one. This is what makes us different from the world. Before the believer sets him or herself to solving the problem, he or she first commits it to the Lord. First Peter chapter 5, verse 7. First Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Says, casting all your care upon him, for he cared for you. That is the confidence we have. The world does not have that confidence. That when we have a problem, we can talk to God about it. But we don't end there. That's what a lot of Christians do. A lot of Christians end at praying. But we don't end at praying. We don't end at what? Praying. Hallelujah. We don't end at Amen. Are we together here? I was over. A couple is having a challenge with fruit of the womb. Say, so, ah, we pray for you. But after praying, you must have as, as much sex as possible. If you don't know, ask Pastor Ben. It's very important. <laughs> and 
you must have it at the, at the right time. <laughs> Not all sex results in pregnancy. There are particular ones. At particular times. Is that not true? <laughs> Amen. Particular times. Huh? No, some people, some people are looking for children and they don't know, they don't know uh, uh, ovulation period. You don't know. You are a woman. You don't know ovulation period. And say, Pastor, we, we are always doing, but we are not seeing anything. You are not doing it well. When you close, see Pastor Ben. <laughs> God bless you, sir. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. A lot of Christians end at praying. No. When you end at praying, you have, you have short-circuited the system. The next step is to Consider all possible solutions. And this is when you have done the inductive reasoning. You have done the analysis. You know, in a transformation problem. You have done the analysis. Analyzing your current state and your desired state. Looking at the differences. And then identifying what can I do to reduce the difference. So you have possible solutions. Maybe solution A. Solution B. Solution C. Hallelujah. Solution D. Tabi Abites. <laughs> Glory to God. Yeah. Possible solutions. Amen. Amen. Consider all of them. Step four. Look at or consider the possible consequences of all alternatives. When you have a set of solutions, you will definitely arrive at one. And then all the others become alternatives. But what is the consequences for those alternatives? Sometimes the consequences may be greater for a certain alternative than the one you have chosen. Then you say, okay, let me rather go back to this one. Consequences. Many people only look at options. They don't look at consequence. So most times, they are trying to solve one problem. Then they create another one. Because they did not look at the consequence. Amen. Amen. Are you together here? Yeah. Sarah proposed an alternate solution to Abraham. Abraham didn't do step three. <laughs> Amen. Or step four, right? That's step, step four. Abraham didn't do step four. He did not look at the consequence of going through the Hagar channel. Instead of Sarah Channel. Praise God. And then he entered Hagar. Part we. <laughs> he didn't look at the consequence. Sometimes the consequence of the alternative may be greater. More than you can bear. Step five. Choose one solution. And act on it. Choose one solution. And act on it. Glory to God. See, a lot of the issues we waste prayer on, they are just wisdom issues. Amen. They are just what? Wisdom issues. Wisdom what? Issues. Glory to God. And I am one kind, I don't quickly jump to pray about things. Especially things I know in some other countries can be done by science. One of my friend pastors, he had a challenge with the fruit of the womb. Thank God, they had money. Then me and the wife, they traveled to UK. No prayer. They went to UK. One year, when they were coming back, they came with a baby. I said, ah, that thing is simple like that. And we are doing a fruit of the womb service here. <laughs> Praise God. It's very important. I'm saying this because a lot of times, the step two becomes our final step. We don't know how to solve problems. Amen. We don't know how to solve problems. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So look for one solution out of the alternatives, out of the many, and then act on it. Decide to act 
on it. When you have a financial problem, there are various ways to solve financial. One of them is stealing. I told you that there are four ways to be extremely rich. One is by inheritance. Most likely, none of us qualify. Me, I don't. I know that me, I, I will never be rich by inheritance. Amen. I know where I'm coming from. Inheritance. So we are done. Amen. Another one is <laughs> stealing your way into wealth. And that it is high level intelligence stealing, not the one we do on the roadside and then they catch people like this. Intelligent one, amen. amen. Intelligence, intelligent. That one I can't do, amen. Yeah, but for the fear of God, you can't do. The third one is hard work, outwork your peers, work like your head is not correct, hard work. Some of them don't have the capacity for it. Because you're already dying with eight hours. Eight hours times five, 40 hours. Yeah, we are dying. Amen. Somebody come from come to church from work, they will sleep too hard. The fourth one is the covenant highway. The blessing of God. That one I can do. Hard work I can do. The other two, not applicable. So there are solutions. Choose one. Act on it. So when I subscribe to a covenant way of wealth, it is I, I cannot compete with the one who is stealing. Um, I will not allow a, a politician who is stealing to come and tell me that going to church is foolish. He has chosen his path. I can't be there. He is stealing without any emotion. Nothing. He is stealing, destroying water for his gains. I can't do it. So let me also go for the one I've chosen. Just like we are doing anti galamse and they don't hear. They can't also do anti titan for us to hear. We have all chosen our parts. Are we, are we together here? Choose a solution. Act on it. Stay by it. Because why? You are trying to solve a problem. You are trying to what? Trying to solve a problem. Glory to God. And finally... Evaluate your results and make needed adjustments. Evaluate your results and make is the solution you chose working? Is it working? Oh, okay. Charlie, that's it. I'm seeing improvement. Too. Okay, that's fine. If it's not working, what adjustment should I do? Evaluate your results and make needed adjustments. Is somebody here? Glory to God. So let me just add two more to the skills. Another one is relational skill. Where you talk to mentors, you talk to experts. Some people cannot solve problems just because they don't know who to talk to. Some people are talking to the wrong person. Hallelujah. Imagine a married woman complaining about marriage to single friends. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Or divorced people. You, you know where that person will end up. Yeah. Your Roman father. <laughs> you are 35 years, you have not married. You are talking to a Roman father. Oh, father, here is you. That guy doesn't have any idea <laughs> what, it, what it takes to buy. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Then another skill. Very important skill. Everybody must have to be able to solve problem. To be able to what? To be able to solve problem. Is spiritual. Strength. Let me call it ability. This, the spirit of man sustains him in his infirmity. In all problems of this life, your spiritual strength will carry you through it. 
a weak or a wounded spirit who can bear. A wounded spirit who can bear. Sometimes everybody sees some of us smiling as if as for us there we have escaped all the problem no we have not the only issue is that we have enough stamina in our spirit that what will kill other people we are smiling at them if we should tell you the things we are dealing with on a daily basis you will be shocked how we still manage to laugh how we still manage to do everything. It is not in it. It is because of spiritual stamina. Spiritual what? Stamina. Some people don't have spiritual stamina to handle rejection. To handle disappointment. Small thing. <laughs> uh, Papa, I want to take a break off church for a while. <laughs> As if when they stay home, they will be better. Hallelujah. Say no problem will overwhelm me. 